Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology, and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearsonate Excel for the Pure Mathematics Paper 2 for June 2020. This is the part 1 video. I'll put the link to the part 2 video below in the description box. Let's begin. Question 1 says the particle P is moving in a straight line at time t seconds and the displacement s meters of P from a fixed point O of the line is given by that. This is displacement. So they say find the distance of P from O, O should be the origin, when P is instantaneously at rest. If P is instantaneously at rest, it means the velocity is equal to zero. So when we differentiate that and equal to zero, we can be able to find the time. So the STT, differentiating that, we get is equal to eight plus two T minus T squared. How do we get T squared? It's gonna be minus three, t squared divided by 3 and that cancels with that and that gives us this one here but remember we know this is occurring at instantaneous rates so this should equal to 0 when we equate that to 0 the quadratic equation can be factorized but we remember from the question here they say t should be greater or equal to 0 so t is equal to 4 and not that however when we go back to the question they say it find the distance of p from the origin this equation gives us the distance as well substituting t is equal to 4 into that we get s is equal to 3 plus 8 times 4 plus 4 squared minus 1 over 3 times 4 cubed. And when we simplify, we get that. However, you round it off to three significant figures, which is 29.7. And that should be your answer for question 1. Moving on. Question 2 says the region enclosed by the curve with the equation y is equal to e power 3x, the x-axis, the y-axis and the line with the equation x is equal to 3 is rotated through 360 about the x-axis. If I sketch the curve like that, and again, this is just a sketch, I'm not saying this curve is like that. If the curve is sketched like that, this is the curve, this is the y-axis, that is the x-axis, and this is the line x is equal to three, so this is the region that is being rotated. They say use algebraic integration to find, in terms of pi and e, the volume of the solid generated. So we know to integrate to find volume, volume should equal to pi, the integral, of y squared dx, where this y should be the y for the curve. So volume is equal to the integral from 0 to 3, because remember this point is x is equal to 0. So from 0 to 3 into e power 3x squared with respect to x. So pi integral 0 to 3 e power 6x dx. When we integrate this, it becomes 1 over 6 times e power 6x. When we substitute x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 0, we get pi over 6. I took this 6 out. Pi over 6 into e to the power 18 minus e power 0. When we go back here, they say use algebraic integration to find in terms of pi and e, the volume of the solid generated. So my final answer should be in terms of pi and e. So this should be pi over 6 e power 18 minus 1. Question 3 says expand 1 plus p x power negative 5 where p is not equal to 0 in ascending powers of x up to and including the term in x power 4 and give each term in its simplest form. I use binomial expansion which is 1 plus x power n is equal to 1 plus nx plus n into n minus 1 x squared divided by 2 factorial plus and so on. But in this case, my n is equal to negative 5 and my x is equal to px. So I'm going to substitute this into that in order to find my expansion. So this will be 1 plus the n, which is negative 5, into x, plus n into n minus 1 is negative 5 minus 1, which is negative 6, into our x squared divided by 2 factorial, plus n into n minus 1, into n minus 2, px power 3, divided by 3 factorial, plus n into n minus 1, into n minus 2, into n minus 3, px power 4, divided by 4 factorial. When some students are substituting this into the binomial expansion, they forget that this is representing the x. The px as a whole is inserted in place of x. So simplifying here, I got 1 minus 5px plus 30 over 2, or what you would call 15p squared x squared, minus that divided by that, we get 35, p cubed x cubed, plus that divided by that, we get 70, p power 4 x power 4, and therefore that is the expansion we were looking for until the time in x bar 4. The next part says the coefficient of x bar r in the expansion ECR. 
given that c4 is equal to 2c3, find the value for p. Remember from the question say c4 is a coefficient of the term in x power 4 and c3 is the coefficient of x power 3. So when we look at this expansion, the coefficient to x power 4 is going to be 70p power 4, which is that. And the coefficient of x power 3 is going to be negative 35p cubed. So if this is equal to that, it means that is equal to twice that, which gives us 70p power 4 is equal to that. When you simplify bringing this to this side and leaving the zero on the other side, we can factorize out 70p cubed into p plus 1. And therefore, 70p power 3 is equal to 0 and p is equal to 0. Or on the other side, p is equal to negative 1. But when we go back to the question, they said p cannot be equal to 0. And therefore, our final p should be p is equal to negative 1. That is the answer. Moving on. Question 4. Solve the equation 16 log to base r4 is equal to log to base 4r. Here we are going to solve this by changing the bases. When we change bases, for example, if you have log ar, I can say this is going to be log b r divided by log b a. That is the rule we can use. And using that rule, which is here, I know this is going to be 16 log 4 4 divided by log 4 r, which is equal to that. We know log 4 4 is equal to 1, so this is equal to 16 divided by log 4 r, which is equal to log 4 r. So when I let log 4r equal to y, I get 16 over y is equal to y, and my 16 is y squared, therefore my y is plus or minus 4. Since my y is log 4r, it means log 4r can equal to 4, or log 4r can equal to minus 4. When log 4r is equal to 4, I use this rule when log ab is equal to n, b is equal to a power n. So using that rule here, we can say log 4r is equal to 4, therefore r is equal to 4 power 4 which is 256. Also, when log 4r is equal to negative 4, r is equal to 4 power negative 4, which is 1 over 256. The next part wants us to solve this equation. However, we have a 1 here, so this is the same as log 5, 5. Everything is log base 5, and they are being added so we can multiply them. So 9 times 12 times 15 times 18 gives us log base 5, 29160. And that times that times that gives us log to base 5, 5x cubed. And that means 29160 is equal to 5x cubed. And therefore, x cubed is equal to 5832, which is equal to 18. Moving on. Question 5. Show that the summation from r equal to 1 to n of 3r plus 5 is equal to that. So here, I always begin by listing the terms in that specific series. So if I substitute r is equal to 1, this is going to be 3 plus 5, which is 8. When r is equal to 2, we get 6 plus 5, which is 11. When r is equal to 3, we get 9 plus 5, which is 14. And therefore, we can see that this is an arithmetic series because there is a common difference. And the first term is going to be 8, while the common difference is going to be 3. So the sum should be Sn, which is n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1d. This is the same as n over 2 into a is 8, so 2 times 8 gives me 16. And the common difference is 3, so I have 3n minus 3 n minus 2 into 13 plus 3. This is the same as 1 over 2n into 3n plus 13, and that is what we're supposed to get. Part B says, hence evaluate the summation from r is equal to 35 to 50. So evaluate that. Since we have from 35 to 50, I found the sum of the first 50 terms minus the sum of the first 34 terms, excluding the 35th term. This is very important that you can visualize that. So since we know for this series a is equal to 8, and d is equal to 3, I can say the sum of the first 50 terms is n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1d, which is 50 over 2 into a times 2, which is 16, plus n minus 1, which is 50 minus 1, giving us 49, times d, which is 3, and we get that. Now the sum of the first 34 terms is going to be n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1d, which is 34 divided by 2, into 2 times 8, which is 16, plus n minus 1, so 34 minus 1, giving us 33 times 3, which is that. The difference between the two is 2, 1, 2, 0, and that is our answer. The next part says, given that the summation from r is equal to 1 to n of 3r plus 5 is equal to 3, 8, 5, find the value of n. So let's see the next page. If this is equal to that, remember a is 8 and d is equal to 3. 
if the sum is equal to 385, we can use the same general formula for finding how many terms there are in this series. So the general formula is n over 2 into 13 plus 3n, which should equal to the sum. So n into 13 plus 3n is equal to 770 when I multiply this to the other side. And multiplying in the n, I get 13n plus 3n squared minus 770 is equal to 0. And this is a quadratic equation we have got. When we factorize this quadratic equation, it becomes 3n plus 55 into n minus 14 is equal to 0. And therefore, n is negative 55 over 3, or n is equal to 14. But since n can never be a negative, n is equal to 14. This brings us to the end of the first part of this paper. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.